Welcome back to Half the Battle. I'm your host as always, Daniel Levy, your co-host Shaq. We're going to be talking Bellator 184, Dantas versus Caldwell, and Emmanuel Sanchez versus Daniel Strauss. And Shaq, it's not often that we do uh, a Bellator edition of Half the Battle, but there's definitely some opportunities on this card. Yeah, man. Uh, Bellator's getting, getting a little better. Uh, this is actually one of the cards that are what I consider a real card. You know, in the past, Bellator's, like, we don't want to see, you know, Gracie versus Shamrock. We want to see Dantes and Caldwell, Manny and Strauss, Tashar and Curran, Baby Joe and Leandro Higo. That's, that's the fight. That's the fights cards we want to see. Exactly. So let's get down to business. Leandro Higo, he's minus 210, and the comeback on Baby Joe Timanglo is plus 160. What are you thinking, man? Yeah, um, Baby Joe, he's, he, that's my guy right there, man. You know, I don't know if you remember, but I uh, called that uh, him upsetting Caldwell that first time. It's unfortunate I didn't bet it when it was like plus a thousand something because he missed weight by like three and a half pounds the day before. <laughs> so I, I couldn't bet it, but you know, I, I did call that upset, but, um, he go, you know, he went to a majority draw with, uh, with, uh, Dantes and, but I think it's more accredited just the way Dantes fights, but, uh, I'm actually going to go with baby Joe in the upset. I think he goes obviously better on the map, but baby Joe just has a way of making things ugly, making things, you know, that street type of brawl, and uh, I think he's going to end up catching him and finishing him somewhere in the second round. I'm not going to bet it just because I got other things going on this weekend. But uh, I'm going to go with Baby Joe for the upset. I'm going to go with Leandro Higo, man. You know, I know his Bellator debut was a title shot against Eduardo Dantas, and he missed weight for his title shot, which one doesn't simply do. But he still went to a split decision, man. And, you know, I know people have been talking about him for years, but I truly believe if he can get his shit together, he can be a force to be reckoned with. And I think in this fight, the distance, the size, the leg kicks, I think they're all going to be big factors in this fight. You know, Joe Timanglo, he swings big bombs. If you shoot on a sloppy takedown, you know, he will catch that neck, as you saw in the Darion Caldwell fight, which was one of the big upsets of that year. That being said, I think Leandro Higo is going to get back on track, and I think he's going to beat Joe Timanglo. Now, next up, Pat Curran, the former champ. He's minus 215. The comeback on John Teixeira is plus 165. So, Shaq, is uh, Pat Curran going to make it three in a row, or is John Teixeira going to get back to his winning ways? Uh, man, it's, it's going to be a tough fight. You know, Pat Curran, two-time world champion, in his day, he was, I mean, a bad motherfucker. I mean, remember when he knocked out Mike Ricci unconscious, when he KO'd Joe Warren unconscious, the wars with Strauss back in the day, the wars with Pitbull. But, I mean, obviously, he's a diminished version of himself, man. He's Even though he, I think he might have just turned 30, the guy's been in the fight game since he was, like, 18 years old. I mean, this guy lost that Darren Elkins, like, way back in the day. And, uh... You know, I'm going to go with uh, Teixeira in this fight, man. Teixeira's 21-2. and two. It's hard to find a record like that in MMA. Trains at Novo and Yao, um, super aggressive. You know, Pat Kern's that type of guy. He's one of those guys I consider a low-volume type of guy. But I also put him in that category with, like, uh, I'm not saying that he's as good as Rustam Kabilov, but you know how we like to say Rustam's low activity. But when he goes, he goes. When Pat Curran goes, he goes. I mean, in that Manny Sanchez fight, Manny would straight outwork him. The thing was that Pat would just, when he when he decided to throw, it always would just be more overpowering than anything Manny threw. And that's how he wins his fights, man. Like when he fought Vaishal, he couldn't he couldn't catch Vaishal, and he ended up losing a decision on points because Vaishal straight outworked him. But uh, I think Pat's past his prime. I think John Teixeira's got more volume. And that's surprising, that, you know, from for a guy coming from that camp because guys from that camp generally don't have that much volume. But John John goes after it. You know, I thought he beat Vaisal his last fight, but as Vaisal, you know, his nickname is the Weasel, and he, he did what he did. He, he weasels decisions out of people. And Teixeira got weaseled, but I think is going to win this fight on volume. I think he will probably get tagged a couple times, you know, charging in forward because Pat's got some sharp 
sharp counters, like just really good crisp box boxing. But I think uh, Teixeira is going to win a split decision. I, he actually wins a lot of split decisions. Which is a quality we like in fighters that we're betting on. And I also have John Teixeira here as well. You know, I took two units at plus 160. And, you know, let's not even talk about the fact that you always fade Pat Curran, right? <laughs> you know, it, uh, it worked out against Daniel Weichel, against Patricio. And I think it's going to work out here. You know, John Teixeira is a guy that's flying under the, the radar. What's his record, Shaq? 21-2. 21 and 2. One does not simply compile a 21 and 2 record in pro MMA. And you know, you can say it's padded, you can say this and that. But look at guys like Jimmy Rivera. Look at guys like Tomas Almeida. When it came time to step up in the big show, they stepped up. And I think that's exactly what John Teixeira is going to do here. And, you know, I know he had a stint in the UFC back in the day. But, you know, Jimmy Rivera lost on tough. You know what I'm saying? Frankie Edgar didn't even get accepted to tough. Fighters evolve. And that's what John Teixeira has done. Now, normally when a fighter's fighting out of Novo and Yao in this day and age, I'm like, you know, they probably got to get out of there. But now he's the star of the gym. The camps revolved around him. His takedown defense is on point. He comes to fight. He's experienced. You know, the only issue is that he is a bit wild, but he's effective with uh, w with the chaos that he brings to the table. And we all know Pat Curran is historically a very slow starter. John Teixeira is the perfect guy to charge him right off the bat, not let Pat Curran get comfortable. Now, look, there's always a chance Pat Curran can land that sneaky left hook and get a takedown at the end of the round. You know, those are the kind of things that per Pat Curran's able to do. You know, he's a, he's a multiple-time world champion, right? Yeah, two-time world champion. He's a two-time world champion for a reason. That being said, he is at the downside of his uh, professional career. He had a great career, might I add. And uh, I think John Teixeira is going to get this by unanimous decision. So I took two units at plus 160 on John Teixeira. Now here we go, man. We've been waiting a long time for this one. You ready? It's Daniel Strauss. He's minus 225. The comeback on Emmanuel El Matador Sanchez is plus 175, man. Now, how exciting is it to see Manny back in there? Yeah, man, especially in this fight, you know, Strauss... You know, coming off the fight that he just had where, I mean, he looked like complete shit. I mean, that wasn't the same guy. Um, you know, Manny Sanchez, we know that he's one of the toughest dudes in Bellator. And we know the guy will always keep moving forward. And he's got good volume. Um, you know, Strauss, another two-time world champion who's on the downside of his career. But not only is he on the downside of his career, he's, uh, let's just say he's heavily medicated. I mean... <laughs> The, the guy, the guy already, you know, has a history of, uh, you know, exotic drug use. You know what I'm saying? You know, not only weed, but you know, other things. He said well. exotic. <laughs> exotic, and uh, you know, he he's always been in that on that uh, on that side. But he's achieved two world champion uh, world championships while doing that. And you know, his maybe his last fight with uh, Pitbull was the fight that he won. Uh, the, when he won the title back, that might have been uh, his final hoorah. And, you know, Manny Sanchez, Manny Sanchez is one of the toughest dudes in Bellator. I mean, I remember when I faded this guy against Justin Lawrence. And, uh, I mean, I, I was thinking Justin Lawrence was going to be an easy win that night. And it was far from easy. I was like, holy fuck, this, this, uh, this Mexican is a fucking savage. He just won't stop coming forward. Even though, you know, I still think I won that fight, but it is what it is. It was close. It could have won either way. And Manny got the nod, and Manny, uh, he wins, he wins, he wins split decisions. And but that's the thing with Manny. We know all of his fights, all of Manny's fights are going to have some type of controversy besides the, uh, Galval fight, the Lawrence fight, the Corrales fight. The um, uh, Georgie fight, the Daniel yeah. Pineda fight, they're always going to, somebody's going to lose a point. So, uh, it's always going to be something like that. Now, look, I took the shot on Manny Sanchez at plus 150. I wish I would have waited, but it is what it is. I took the shot mainly due to what I said before. I think Strauss is on his way out. I think he's heavily medicated, and I don't think he's the same guy. But I'm 100% relying on that alone because look when Strauss is at his best 
when he was, you know, in his championship state, I think he's a better fighter, hands down. I think he's better on the feet. I think he's better wrestling. I've seen Manny Sanchez. How many has lost in the past? He's lost to Kern and Bison. And what they, and what those two did was Manny would outwork them in volume. And those two guys would just land power shots inside the pocket and secure takedowns. And Strauss is very physical, even though he's old, he's past his prime. He can land power shots, and he is the better wrestler, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, though. I think Manny's going to get up every single time. But those are how those guys sealed rounds against him. I think Manny is way better on the outside than he is on the inside. You know, I, I think he can be taken down. But if you ask me who's the better fighter skill-wise, I think Strauss is the better fighter skill-wise. But I'm taking the shot alone just because what I've been seeing from Strauss over the last several months, which is heavily, he's smoking mad weed, bro. Like the guy, he ain't just smoking a blunt here and there. I mean, the guy's smoking, you know, the, the real, the realest of the realest, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I took that one unit shot. I, I might add more if it gets better. Um, I just got to see, I got to see, uh, you know, the weigh-ins and I'm going to see an interview or two. But, um, you know, in their primes, in, in Strauss's prime, I think he actually stopped Sanchez. I think I think he beats Sanchez hands down, but he's obviously not in his prime. And Manny, I just know Manny will never quit. I know Manny's going to go in there and fight for my money. So uh, I'm gonna, I took that one unit shot, but uh, we'll see what happens. Man, I, I'm champing at the bit, man. You know, uh, like you mentioned, we, we've been following Daniel Strauss for a while, and he's a super cool dude, you know? Hung out with him last year in Vegas, but this isn't a hangout uh, situation, man. This is a put money on the table situation. And, you know, if you go to his Instagram, you know he's sponsored by FlavRx. And we looked up, to, we you know, we looked into it. You know, what, what exactly is FlavRx? Well, I'm holding a FlavRx pen right now. And I can tell you, if this guy's training on this, fade him at all costs. You know what I'm saying, Shaq? Like, uh... And this dude's doing this shit at the gym, bro. I don't know what to say, bro. I think that uh, <laughs> that uh, Daniel Strauss, I think he's on his way out. And Emmanuel Sanchez is the kind of guy that he's going to fight for your money, like you said. He gets better every single fight. The fights that he, lose, that he loses are controversial. And you don't like to you know bet on guys that lose close split decisions. But he wins a lot of close split decisions as well. He comes to fight every single time. And he, they call him overtime for a reason because this guy lives in the gym. You know what I mean? Like uh, he shows up before everyone and he leaves after everyone. And, you know, Duke Rufus doesn't go to everyone's corner. There's only a couple guys, Shaq. You know this firsthand. Anthony Pettis, Sergio Pettis, and Emmanuel Sanchez. Those are, those are the only guys where Duke shows up. Otherwise, it's, uh, you know, Coach Cush and Biggie, right? So, uh <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that Manny's primed to be champion, man, and he wants it so bad. His mentality is on a different level. I mean, this is a guy that, you know, a after his last fight, he wasn't out partying. He's already getting ready for the next fight. You know, he's one of those guys, whereas Daniel Strauss, man, did you see his fight against, uh, against Patricio, the fourth one? You know, the fight starts, and, you know, he's looking at his corner, and he cl clearly doesn't want to be there. He's out of shape. This is a championship fight, man. You know, I just don't think his head's into it. And he's taking these pictures like, you know, like, uh, sp you know, showing a sponsorship. And he's not, you know, he's running in a in the mountains and he's not even sweating. You know what I mean? The shit's fake. Like, he's, uh, he's not training for this fight. So, I hope he makes weight. I hope he shows up. I took two units at plus uh, 150 and one unit at plus 175. So uh, I got Manny Sanchez. You know, I think most likely he's going to go out there and win a decision. But don't be surprised if he takes the back of Daniel Strauss and chokes him out. So I got uh, I got Emmanuel El Matador Sanchez. The main event time, we got Eduardo Dantas. He's the champ. And he's defending his belt against Darion Caldwell. It's minus 125 for Dantas with the comeback. Well, not comeback, but Caldwell is minus 115. Yeah, Dantas actually opened up the underdog, which is surprising, considering, you know, Caldwell's best win is over an old uh, Joe Warren. And even though Joe Warren is, you know, he, Joe Warren is actually very underrated. He's actually really good. But uh, he straight smashed Joe Warren. And at the time, I was like, 
why is Caldwell such a huge favorite over Warren? Like, Joe Warren wins fights. And uh, he showed me why at the time. You know, I did I did uh, pick against him against Tom Inglo, And I've always been a little bit skeptical about Caldwell. But I've always said there is one day when he's going to figure it out and he's going to be really, really fucking good. And, you know, the rematch against Baby Joe, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like, he did what he had to do. He took him down. He's the best. He's a national champion wrestler, all-American wrestler. And he took him down whenever he wanted to, which was what he was doing in the first fight. The first fight, it was just that some of the, in the first fight, some of the shots were just terrible. I mean, he was shooting from like halfway across the cage. And we know Dantas is super well-rounded. You know, the guy is can do But when he's lost, it's been by getting wrestled. I mean, you saw him lose against uh, Joe Warren back in the day when he completely dropped the ball. And, you know, and you know Dantas isn't going to... A lot of the times he doesn't smoke people. We know it's going to be a fight. And uh, I'm going to go with Dantas. This one, man. I know Caldwell, you know, he, he switched camps. He's training with Dominic Cruz now. He's training with, you know, Goyito Perez. I see him putting on a lot of work with those guys. But um, I just don't, I still don't think he's ready yet, man. I still think Dantas is a step above, and I think he'll get a, a, a split decision win. Man, it, it, it's an interesting fight, you know, and props to you for calling uh, that upset between Ty Mangla and Caldwell, man. It was like, what, plus 1,000 or whatever, but. At the same time, that was his first L. He got it out of the way. And normally, he is the bigger guy in there. But I believe him and Dantes are the same height. And Dantes is so experienced. So it's about, you know, Dantes is a two-time world champion, man. I mean, can he hang on to it? Or is this that time? Because back when he fought Tyson Nam, you remember that? Yeah. That came out of nowhere. You know, Dantes... Uh, He'll dominate certain people, and then he'll randomly get KO'd by. Like, uh, you remember the you remember the Mike Richmond fight after he lost the belt? Oh, that was it ugly. Was, that was and ugly. He, and he looked like you know complete shit. And I thought I bet on Mike Richmond, and I thought uh, Mike Richmond won that fight. And you know he, he looked terrible. Like, <laughs> like Richmond, Richmond, and him were like you know fighting hard in the wrestling department, where on paper Dantes is supposed to you know smoke him in the wrestling department, but. You know, on the feet, like, Dantas was just straight running away, which is, back then, you know, I didn't like that style, but now I like that style, man. That style is the more efficient style. It's the more safer style. And, you know, it is what it is. But he has had times where he has dropped the ball and looked bad. Yeah, 100%. So, you know, is he going to come out here trying to be safe? And at the same time, can he stuff the takedowns of Darren Caldwell? How much better has Caldwell gotten I really have no idea, man. I, I think it's a pick em for a reason. So, you know, obviously there's no bet. I, I have to make a pick. Who'd you pick? I took uh, Dantes, but, I mean, it could go either way. Fuck I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for Caldwell, though. All right, fuck. I'll, I'll take Caldwell, but, yeah, uh, no bet, obviously. But, Shaq, there's only four options. Fight to watch and fighter to watch. So what's the fight to watch, man? The fight to watch is... uh. I'm going to say to Sharon Curran, man. Curran hasn't fought in... Well, man, when's the last time Curran fought? I mean, I know his last two fights have been Manny Sanchez and Georgie. And Manny Sanchez, since they have fought, has probably fought five or six times. That's where, since that fight, Curran has only fought once. So that just shows you how inactive the guy's been. And, you know, the winner of this fight is, you know, right in line after the winner of Strauss and Sanchez. And I just, I love to share a style, man. The guy gets after it. The beating that he put on Justin Lawrence was incredible. I mean, he, when you, when you butcher a man's leg to the point where he can no longer stand, I mean, that's impressive, man. No, I, I like that style. He's super wild. He's super active. And uh, I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hoping he goes out there and gets the win. Yeah, that's an incredible fight. I mean, we got to see what kind of condition, what kind of state Pat Kern is in, and John Teixeira, he's hungry, he's experienced. The performance he put on against Justin Lawrence, like you mentioned, even against Daniel Weichel, I mean, a lot of us thought he won that fight. He went out there, he dropped Daniel Weichel, he had a three-round knock with Daniel Weichel, and uh, if he won that fight, he could be the number one contender, but now he's got an opportunity against the former champ, and if he wins this fight, he's going to be right up there in title contention. But for me, and I appreciate you for letting me take this one for a fight to watch, man. 
you know, because we got Daniel Strauss versus Emmanuel Sanchez. And uh, I mean, I, I'd watch the card for this fight alone. It, you know, it's so incredible. Anytime you get Daniel Strauss, who is what, a two or a three time world champion? Two. He's a two time world champion. He's taking on Emmanuel Sanchez, who. You know, I mean, for a long time, people have been saying this could be the future featherweight champion. And Emmanuel Sanchez, not only does he have the championship qualities, but he's one of the most exciting fighters in the division. He's always coming forward. And I cannot wait for Strauss versus Sanchez. Well, Shaq, we did it. It's going down this Friday. Bellator on Spike. Uh, let him know what's up, Shaq. Yeah, uh, follow me, MMA Genius 05. And uh, I'm hoping Bellator puts on more cards like this, man. I don't want to see the the uh, the little the old legend fights like Chuck and and Chael. I'm hearing rumors of that. I mean, I'll watch it, but like, come on, bro. Like, is it? It's like you like to say, is this a sick joke? Like, <laughs> <laughs> who wants to see that shit? Like, I mean, I'll watch it because you know I'll be bored or something. But like, it's a joke. But like, these are the cards that I can get down for. These are the real fights. Yeah, 100%. And follow me at Best Fight Picks. Go to bestfightpicks.com for the play. Subscribe to Half the Battle on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Shaq and I will be back later. Is the is the next UFC card next week or the week after? Um, I think it's next week. Oh, shit. It's already time for Donald Cerrone versus Darren Till? Yeah. Wow. Cowboy versus Till. We will be back for that card. So until the next time, let's cash these bets.